With the addition of modding support, Forager is now open to an impressive amount of player customization. The newly available API allows deep customization of existing game mechanics, as well as the ability to extend the game in completely new ways. Before we dive in and make our first mod, there are a few things you'll need. You will, of course, need the latest version of Forager installed through Steam, and while it's not required, it does help to have a rudimentary understanding of GML. GML, or Game Maker Language, is the programming language that Forager is written in, and it is also the language that is used to create mods for your game. If you've never heard of GML before, or maybe if you're just a beginner, you can learn more by downloading a 30-day free trial of Game Maker Studio 2, which I've included a link to in the description. Knowledge of GML isn't required to follow along with this video, though. There are two more things that we'll need before we get started. First, we'll need to download the Forager modding tool. This is a small program that will help us create our modding files. In addition, we can use this tool to upload our mod to the Steam Workshop when we're done. We can download the tool directly from the Forager modding documentation website. It's a good idea to keep this page open, as it includes a lot of helpful information that we'll need later. I've included a link to it in the description. Next, we'll need to get gmedit. We can get this from the gmedit itch.io page, which is also linked in the description. This tool will help us write the GML in our mod. There's a bit of setup involved after we download this tool. Back in the Forager modding documentation, there's one more link we need to download. This link will give us a zip file that contains special instructions for gmedit that will allow it to have better support for Forager modding specifically. After downloading both the zip file and gmedit, let's open up gmedit. Click the hamburger menu in this corner, then click on Preferences, scroll all the way down, and click on GML Dialects Directory. This should open a folder on your computer. Leave this folder open and return to the zip file that we just downloaded earlier. Extract the contents of this zip file directly into the GML Dialects Directory that we just opened. With that complete, we can close the zip file and the folder that was just opened and return to GMEdit. Now, let's click Reload GM Edit. GM Edit is now set up and we're ready to begin modding. To create our first mod, let's open the Forager modding tool. On the bottom right corner, click on Create New Mod. Then, enter a name for your mod. Once you've entered a name, click on Create. This will open a folder containing your new mod files. To edit our mod, we need to drag the fmconfig.json file into gmedit. You will notice that your files now appear on the left side of the window, which means our mod loaded successfully. Double click on main.gml to open it up. There's not much in here. Let's add something simple. Underneath the first line, Enter trace, and then inside parentheses and quotation marks, hello world. This will call the trace function and provide it with the string hello world. It's not much, but for our first mod, it's a good start. Let's open up Forger to test it out. Once your game has launched, click the modding button on the bottom right hand side of the screen. You should see your mod appear in the list on the right. Click the off button next to your mod's name to toggle it on. If you're actively making changes to your mod while the game is open, you can click on the Compile button to make sure any changes you've made are loaded into the game. Once we click this button, if we open up the console by pressing T on our keyboard, we will see that our message has appeared. Hello world. We now have a mod that is successfully loaded into our game. It doesn't do much, but it works. Let's take it a step further and make our mod do something useful. So back to GM Edit. Let's make it so that every time a player digs with their shovel, they are guaranteed to find iron ore. In order to do this, we need to create a section of our code that runs whenever the player digs with their shovel. Luckily, there's an event for that. An event is a function that will be run automatically in response to something that happens within Forager. This makes it really easy for us to run code when certain things happen in the game, like when the player loads their save or when they level up. In the modding documentation, you can find a list of all the events that the modding API supports. The event that we'll need is onDig. This event triggers whenever the player uses their shovel. So back in GM Edit, underneath what we currently have, we can write hash, define, space, then on dig, and x comma y inside parentheses. 
By the way, this syntax is how you define your own functions in gmedit. All mods must have a function called main, and you'll notice that we already have one at the top. Any code that is inside the main function will run as soon as the mod is loaded. Any code that we write in onDig will run every time the player digs with their shovel. So to make iron ore pop out of the ground, we'll need a function related to items. In the documentation, let's scroll down to item database, then click general functions, and at the top, we can see a function called drop item. Drops the given item into the world. Sounds like just what we need. It looks like we will also need an X and Y coordinate, which we already have from our event, as well as an item to drop, and how many we want to drop at once. We have everything we need except the item we want to drop. Luckily, that information isn't hard to get. All of the items in Forager can be found in an enum. An enum is basically a container that stores a ton of numbers. We can view all of the available Forager enums by clicking on enums, then enum list. Scrolling down a bit, we will find the item enum. Right at the top, we can see iron ore. So now we know how to access iron ore in our code. Let's go back to GM edit and bring this all together. So under our on dig line, write drop item, then inside parentheses, we are going to first pass X and Y, which we have from the event. Next, we need to reference the iron ore item. So first we write the enum name item, then period iron ore, just as it appears in the documentation. Lastly, we need to include an amount, so we can just put one. Let's save our mod, return to Forager, and click Compile. All that's left is to test things out. I'll create a brand new Forager save just for that. I'll also enable cheats so that I can easily give myself a shovel. So the first thing I'll need to do is cheat in a shovel, which I can do by pressing T on my keyboard and then entering the following command. Note that when you use the give command, you don't need to type item dot before the item name. You can directly use anything that appears under the item enum in the documentation. So let's run this command and get our free shovel. And now let's try digging around. Awesome, everything is working. We now have a useful mod. Continue reading the Forager documentation to learn more about what's possible with modding. If you're having trouble with GML, be sure to have a look through the official GameMaker documentation as well. If you get really stuck, feel free to join the Forager Discord community to ask for help. There are tons of members making their own mods, so it's a great place to share what you know and get feedback. I've included a link to the GameMaker docs and the Forager Discord in the description. Good luck on your modding journey, and thanks for watching.